Good morning. Welcome to House of God and Gate of Heaven Church. We're so happy to have you join us this morning. I am so excited and so ready for what God has planned. Let me know if you guys are excited too. Be on the group chat and be like, ooh, I'm ready. Amen. So as we begin, we pray, Father God, Lord, that you would be in this place, Father. That the worship would be anointed, that the that the preaching would be the exact message that we need to hear this morning. We thank you. We bless your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Forever.
Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I believe. I believe God could do the impossible. I believe God is in this house. God is in this little gospel barn that we have here. And I know that, that God is moving in this place. Ooh, and I'm happy. And thank you guys for watching. And those that, that are always tuned in there. And those that watch afterwards. I know that, that, that I know people receive. You know, we're not here to bring no wishy-washy message. I come to bring the truth. And like the Bible says, the truth shall set you free. And who is the truth? Jesus Christ. So I bring Jesus. Every 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 week I bring Jesus in the house. So I'm, I'm grateful that God gives me this opportunity. This is a church. This is House of God and Gate to Heaven Church. We're, we're legit. We're not no, you know, we didn't make nothing up. God gave us a calling and we opened a ministry. You know, it's legit tax everything it's we have our own an account and i want to invite you know people that that want to invest into the ministry because that you know like the bible says give and you shall receive so if you want to invest into the ministry i have already people that give tithes and offerings and i appreciate that for those that give and those that want to give we i invite you to do so and um you could get in touch with me or my wife you could send you can leave a comment there and, and I'll give you a way to, you know, to give into the ministry because basically you're giving into this ministry and then, you know, we could move on from that. But my point today is, I, today is the first Sunday of the month. So like I said, we're going to have communion. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So if you don't if you don't have your bread and your wine or grape juice whatever you choose to have we're gonna have communion after the service so don't don't get ready so i'm gonna give people time for them to get it ready so every first sunday of the month this is what i want to do and this is this is what it is amen and i hope that we could have communion together and you know, this is something that the Lord wants us to do. He did it with his disciples, and and I want to do it every 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 um every first Sunday of the month. So, if you could join us after the service to have communion, we're gonna pray for the sick, and we're gonna do whatever the Lord wants to do here in this place today. <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise the name of Jesus. I think we stirred up some devils up in this place today <laughs> with the worship. Boy. My neighbors were like playing music and like trying to get away from the Holy Ghost in this place. But you know what? I believe that God moves throughout this whole block. When we come in here and we start praying and we start worshiping and we start bringing the word, I believe this whole neighborhood. I believe that God could bring somebody down to their knees. I don't have to go over there and preach to them because it's the Holy Spirit that does the work. I don't do a work. So if God touches you today, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit that is the one that's moving. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So today, I was thinking about the message last week. And I, I'm going to bring part two of throwing punches. <laughs> because I think there's a little bit more to throwing punches. I, I want to give you some more strategies. And I want to give you a real good strategy today that's going to allow you to give a knockout punch. Amen. Last week I said something about, you know, that the enemy is constantly attacking us. Amen. And my wife said, no way, he's not always attacking us. And I told you, yeah, baby, you're right. He's not always attacking us. You know, he gives me some vacation time, you know, once in a while. <laughs> but but he is he is there. He is there trying to do, you know what I mean? He, he, he's, we have to have our guard up, basically. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We have to be ready because, you know, and, and me as a preacher and I'm, as a minister, he wants to attack me. Like big times. You're, he doesn't want me to bring this word. And and I'm going to talk about him today. And I'm going to talk about how, you know, we could defeat him. So he don't want this. So he is going to come and attack me. But that's not, I, I'm not giving you a reason to like, oh, so he, he let him attack pastor. No, no, we need to be, we need to be ready. We need to be ready. You know, I'm not saying that he, like, like last week, 
he he does attack. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Amen. He but mm -hmm. like I you know he gives me some vacation time. You know when I'm praising the Lord, he ain't gonna come and attack me. He ain't gonna come and attack me. But he does come and attack my mind whenever you know he has a chance. Amen. Like I said last week, the devil cannot touch us. He can't touch us. Amen. But what he does, he, and he cannot make a sin. Okay, I want to make that clear. The devil cannot make a sin. You know why? Because in Colossians 2, it says that Christ's death defeated him. So he cannot make a sin. Okay, he doesn't make a sin. But what he does is he plants thoughts in our minds until they become his, our thoughts. Okay, L let me say that again. He plants his thoughts in our mind until they become our thoughts. Are you, do you understand what I'm saying? So he plants his thoughts in our minds. He attacks our mind with his thoughts until they become our thoughts. Amen. And that is what influenced our action. And that's when we sin. Okay. So his thoughts, his junk comes to our mind until we connect and we, it becomes our thoughts. Okay. And that's how the enemy works. So, Fred, that's what I want to throw out there first of all. Did you understand that? Does that make sense? Yeah. He's junk. He throws it at us until it becomes our junk. And then that's what causes us to sin. Amen? He, do, he can't make us sin. He can't force us to sin. But his thoughts into our mind make us sin because then his thoughts become our thoughts. That kind of makes sense. I think I think I made that mm -hmm. clear, right? All right, good. But I think my personal opinion, I think the main door that we could open is distraction. Distraction opens doors in our lives. Amen. And the Bible says that Satan is the prince of this world. Amen. And almost every distraction that we could have comes from this world. So he is the prince of the world. He comes, you know, Satan comes to, to bring distraction in our lives in any possible way. Okay. So I read this quote and it got me thinking the other day, you know, and I'm like, this is probably one of the main sources of distraction in our lives. I read this quote. It says, the more you focus on yourself, the more distracted you will be from the proper path. Wow. Amen. Let me repeat that again. The more you focus on yourself, yourself, the more distracted you will be from the proper path. Everything that distracts you in something, everything that brings distraction, I believe, is something that you want or that you desire. Amen. Oh, I want to do this. I, I desire this. You know, and that's what brings distraction. It's your wants and your desires. Amen. So that's what, you know, a, like, like, oh, I want, I want to have a lot of money. You know, I, I want to be successful. And, 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 and that's what you're chasing. You're chasing money instead of chasing God. So I believe that is a big, dis excuse me, distraction in our lives. And many other things that are in the world. Things that we want and we desire. Like, like the quote said, when we focus on ourselves, the more distracted you come from the proper path. Ourselves, our desires, our wants, and our needs. I'm going to throw a little curveball to you guys today. You guys are not going to think what I'm going to say today, but I'm going to throw a little curveball. Okay? A partner, a husband, or a wife can bring distraction in your life. <laughs> You're like, man. Those that are single, they're like, well, that's not that wasn't my plan. <laughs> but let me give you some scripture. First Corinthians 7, 29, and we're gonna read chapter 7, verse 29, we're gonna read to verse 35. And the word says, But let me say this, dear brothers and sisters, the time that remains is very short. So from now on. Those with wives should not focus only on their wives, on their marriage. Those who weep or rejoice or buy things should not be absorbed by their weeping or joy or their possessions. You see? 
those who use the things of the world should not become attached to them. For this world, as we know it, will soon pass away. I want you to be free from the concerns of this life. An unmarried man can spend his time doing the Lord's work and thinking how he can please him. But a married man has to think about his earthly responsibilities and how to please his wife. His interests are divided. In the same way, a woman who is no longer married or has never been married can be devoted to the Lord and holy in body and in spirit. But a married woman has to think about her earthly responsibilities and how to please her husband. I am saying this for your benefit, not to place restrictions on you. I want you to do whatever will help you serve the Lord best with as few distractions as possible. You got that, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't think I was going to bring that scripture. <laughs> but it's the truth. It's, it, he's talking truth. He does. He wants anything like, like he said, you know, you, I'm not saying, oh, don't get married now. Don't get married. In the beginning it says, don't get married, but don't, you know, spend all your time, you know, with your wife. You, I, I, I love my wife. I spend time with her. But my morning is for the Lord. Right? She, she, you know, sometimes in the morning I give her, you know, her some time. But I'm not going to talk too much about that. But, you know, um, the morning is the Lord. This, I, I get into the Word. I, I seek the Lord. And, and I give Him. And I know in my heart that, I, that God wants more of me. And I know that I give God my morning time. And then in the nighttime, I spend time with him. But God told me the other day, and not the other day, he's told me more than one time, I brought you over here so you could spend time with me. So basically, I'm here so I could spend more time with the Lord. I'm serious. And I know it's true. And he's told me over and over again. But, you know, things, you know, he... He brings what? Distraction in our lives. And distraction takes us away from God's purpose in our lives. Amen. So the other day I was talking to my son-in-law, Nick. And while I went to South Carolina, he told me, Oh, have you ever heard of this um, megaverse? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, I told him, I don't, I don't be watching the news or nothing like that. He said, it's not in the news. This is something that's going to come out new it's called the megaverse it's like a 3d virtual system that you put on those goggles and and you have you know you, you basically you live another life this is through like facebook and stuff you basically you could go out you buy property you 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 go out to events you know you have your friends you, you it's it's crazy it's like basically you have another life now, your life and then your megaverse life and i'm telling you i went into it a little bit to find a little bit of information because i didn't want to talk about something that i didn't know and right away when i clicked megaverse they try to sell me pieces of property like and and from what i hear um nick told me that it hasn't fully come out but they're already selling property think about this for a second what kind of distraction would this be in somebody's okay. life? It's crazy. It's crazy. Think about it. Do you think that will bring a distraction in somebody's life? The enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. He does not want you to get with him. I'm telling you. Think about this for a second. You go out to work. You live your life. And then you get home. You put on your goggles. And you live another life. What time are you going to have with the Lord? No time. This is like, like, like a strategy that I kind of like, it blew my mind. It blew my mind. I'm like, and, and I guarantee you that they're going to create some kind of church that you could go into church with your virtual goggles because they're not going to just, you know, because they're not, they're not targeting the people of the world. They're targeting the enemy. This is the enemy's plan. I'm sorry to tell you. And he's not targeting just the world. He's targeting us as Christians. Amen. So then as I kept reading, I read a disclaimer in the in the megaverse and that thing hasn't even came out. And look what it says. 
user addiction and user safety are concerns within the megaverse streaming from challenges of facing social and media video and game industries as the whole world so basically they're saying in little letters you're gonna get addicted to this thing mm -hmm. Isn't it? it's gonna mess Great. with your mind the devil is gonna get in there and take hold of you amen and I think this is a great, everybody here is like, <gasps> because they never heard about it. But thanks to my son-in-law, he told me all about it the other day. Thank you, Nick, if you're watching. You know what I mean? And, and, and God revealed that to me. He said, man, this is, this is how the enemy is going to attack. He's going to bring a big time distraction. Because people are going to want to be in that megaverse more then they're going to want to be with the Lord or with their family or everything else. This is going to break families. Oh, hallelujah. This is the devil's uh, famous thing. Trust me. I, and and, that, and that's, that's, a big, that's a big blow. But he's already throwing stuff. You know what I mean? I, I've seen it. I've, I've, been, I've been around people that, that, that play video games at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, Really? Six, seven, like four or five hours playing video games? Imagine you gave that to the Lord. And I know I have to change stuff. And I and I watch, I like sports, so I watch a game, you know what I mean? Two hours, some games. That's two hours I took out of my time to give to sports. You understand what I'm saying? So that's even me. I'm like, yo, I, I need to check myself. Maybe, you know, I need to only watch one game a week or whatever. You understand? Or only when the Heat are playing. <laughs> <laughs> because I like to watch all the games. But yesterday, it was the final four of the championship of college football, of base, um, basketball. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to watch it. Because I'm not going to spend that, you know, it was two games, final four. So there was two and two. I'm like, you know what? That's two hours and two hours. That's four hours I'm going to waste of my time. No. I spend time with my family, my girls, and, and we watch some chick flicks, P.O.P.O. -P -O flicks. And that was cool. Amen. And I spend time with the Lord. I, I study my, my thing, you know. And it's crazy. You know what I mean? Because this, this all this stuff, you know, is going to take us away from the Lord. And that's the enemy's plan. He's out there to kill, steal, and destroy. And he is the prince of this world. He is the prince of the world that we live in. But the Bible says, greater is he that's in me, Jesus Christ, than he that's in the world. Okay? So if we walk with Christ, we will defeat the world. But if we walk with the world, we will be defeated. Okay? Okay? So I want to give you some scriptures for those that think that the enemy is not the one that's in charge of the world. I love to give scripture. Amen. John 14, 30. Jesus, this is red letters. Jesus says, I will not say much more to you for the prince of this world is coming. He has not, he has no hold over me. So Jesus is already even telling his disciples, hey, the prince of this world is coming. And, and why would he say that? Because he is the one that's in charge of this world. Then we could go to 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. It says, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. I would dare to add also there, believers. Unbelievers and believers. So they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So I, I, I dare to add believers and unbelievers. Because that's, I'm a believer. And let me tell you, he's trying to bring distraction in my life. I ain't going to put on no, no goggles. I guarantee you that. And I need to stay away more from the things of the world. Because that's the enemy's plan. Because he is the one that's in charge of the world that we live in. It. 1 John 5.19 says, We know that we are children of God and that the what whole world is under the control of the evil one. I'm going to stop there because I could give giving scripture. I, I'm not going to go. I'm not, I, don't wanna, I don't want this message to go on forever because we have to do communion. I'm going to stop right there. 
But my point is, if we don't throw punches, we're going to lose our battle. We're going to lose this battle. We're in a battle. We're in a battle. Like the verse that I gave you last week. What was it? First Timothy 6, 11. It says, but you man of God, flee. That's key right there. Flee. What did Joseph do when, when Potiphar's wife, you know, came after him? He flee. He left. He, he went running. We need to get away from the things, the distractions and everything that is trying to come in our lives and take us away from God's purpose in our life. God has a plan and a purpose in your life for good and not for evil to prosper you and to give you a future. Jeremiah 29, 11, it is written. That's what God wants. Amen. But it says, but you men of God flee from all this and pursue, go after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. If we are living, like I said last week, with righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness, what's, what are we going to do? We're going to build a wall. And what's the enemy? He, can't, he, he is the accuser of the brethren, right? So what is he going to accuse? What is he going to accuse me of? What is he going to accuse me of if I'm living righteous? Huh? He does not have no accusations against me. Okay? If I'm living in goodness, if I have my faith, I believe in God. Amen? Love, endurance, gentleness. He cannot touch me. But this week, I'm going to bring the big loves. I'm going to bring the big punches that you could bah, 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 bah. You could bring it down on him. Amen? Who's ready? Amen. Who's ready to throw some, some big blows? Amen. Like Muhammad Ali says, you know, light as a feather. What did he say? There's a saying that he says, sting like a bee, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Um, we're going to bring it today. Ephesians chapter 6. You know, you got, most of you guys know where I'm going. That shirt that I was wearing last week. The armor of God. Hallelujah. We're going to start in verse 10. 6.10. It says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and His and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. For our struggles is not against what? Flesh and blood. We ain't fighting no flesh and blood. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world. So who we're fighting with? Yeah. Against the forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armor of God that when the day of evil comes you may be able to stand ground. And after you have done everything to stand firm, then with the belt of truth around your waist... You see, that's that's key right there, because it says the belt of truth. If you're if you're out there lying, you don't have the belt of truth. You understand what I'm saying? The Bible says that the devil is the father of lies. So if you're out there lying, you you're just like the devil. Think about it. I was telling my wife the other day, in April Fools. I'm like, that's the day of the devil, and we're like, when she started laughing, I'm like, it is. Because everybody's lying to everybody about something to trick them. It is. Right or wrong? Yeah. Am I right or am I wrong? You've probably never seen it that way. But the Lord gave me a revelation. You went and called Stacy and said you're right by the house. You're lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I'm serious. Mm -hmm. I, it came to my mind. I'm like, we're lying. That's the day of the devil. So if you participated... Repent. <laughs> Amen. So it says, put on the buckle around your waist of the, of the belt of truth. Amen. It says, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. What did I say the other scripture said? Righteousness. If we live righteous, let me tell you, the enemy can't touch us. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. What was the other scripture said? Faith. faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> With which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Think about it. 
if you have the shield of faith, I'm believing that greater is he that's in me. I am a child of God. I am every little dart that he throws at me. Boof, I'm going to knock it down because you ain't got nothing here. You ain't got nothing here because I'm believing in what I believe in. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to what it says. Take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. Hallelujah. Woo. When you take up this word right here, there ain't no devil could mess with you. Mm -hmm. Because you have his word. You have the map. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Look what Joshua 1 8 says. This is what, if you have the word inside of you, look, check this out. Joshua 1 8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it, what? Day and night. It's not talking about once a week. It's talking about day and night. So that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then, listen, for then you will make your path prosperous. Hallelujah. And then you will have success. Okay? That's what the Word of God does. And then let's keep reading. Verse 18. This is back in Ephesians 6. And pray in the Spirit on all occasion with all kind of prayer and requests. I was thinking about this when, when I was reading this. And I told everyone that I was the enemy attacks, us, attacks me when I start praying with my family. So I'm like, I'm going to start praying with my family every day. Every day, every day, every day, I'm going to pray with my family. Every day in the morning, we come and pray. All me, Rachel, and, 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 and Rachel Marie. So we come together and we pray. And, and we started doing it every day. And then all of a sudden, we stopped doing it. Like all of a sudden. And I forgot all about it. And a couple of days later, I'm like, we stopped praying. That's how the enemy works. He blinds. He, he, he brings some kind of distraction. And I had no idea that I had stopped praying. But that's what the enemy does not want us to pray. And I told my wife, babe, we forgot. I forgot to pray. She goes, oh, I knew it. I just wanted you to take the initiative. I'm like, forget that. Child. Next time I forget, you better tell me. Because that's because he wants to bring some kind of distraction in my life or whatever. He comes to, to do that. Because he doesn't want us to pray. And then it says, pray also with me, for me. So you guys, I'm telling you, pray for me too. I need some prayer. That whenever, whenever I speak words, maybe, okay, excuse me. Also, this is Paul speaking, but I'm talking to you today because Paul's not around anymore. I'm here now. For also for me, that whenever I speak words may be given me so that I will fiercely make known the mysteries of the gospel. Amen. So pray for me also. Hallelujah. So I believe if we walk around with the armor, I don't know about you. If we walk around with this armor, we got it. We got it. We got it. Is he going to come and attack? Yeah, but we have the armor, the helmet, everything is in place. Amen. We have the shield. So his fiery darts that come our way, boof, I believe it. The shield of faith. Amen. The belt of truth. I ain't going to lie. Because if I start lying, then I'm going to act like the devil. And then what is he going to do? He's going to accuse you. Because mm -hmm. that's what he does. He's the accuser of the brethren. You start lying, he's going to accuse you. You start doing stuff that's not right, and he's going to start accusing you. Okay, so that's why we need to put on the belt of truth. Stop lying to your wife. Stop lying to your husband. Stop lying to your friends, your family members. Say the truth. The Bible says the truth shall set you free. Amen? We need to be free. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish with this. I've been listening to Tony Evans the other day. We, we, bought, we all been listening to Tony Evans. He's tremendous. A tremendous preacher. 
So he gave this analogy the other day. And he said, you had to go on a journey. If you had to go on a journey, think about this for a second. If you had to go on a journey, but there's no way out, you had to go on the journey. There's no like, oh, I'm not gonna go on the journey. No, you have to go on this journey. So if you have to go on a journey, listen to this, and there's no other way out, you have to go, but, but this journey is not gonna be that comfortable. You're gonna confront many things on this journey, okay? So in this journey, there's gonna be landmines, okay? There's gonna be bombs, there's gonna be secret booby traps, there's going to be quicksand and many articles, many things, many things that, but you have to go on the journey. There's no way out. You have to go on this journey. But the great thing about it is that you have a map. You have this map that tells you exactly where everything is at. All the bombs, everything that, that is going to, everything. So what, so my question to you today is, what are you going to do with that map? Are you going to roll it up like that and put it in your pocket? Are you going to look at the map once a week? Think about it. Or are you going to... What If you want to, if you want to succeed in your journey, what are you going to do with the map? Hmm? Use it. You're going to use it. Because if not, what's going to happen? And that's how the devil works. God has given us a map. God gave me a map. Amen. I have the map. I have the map to beat him up. God gave us the map. What are you doing with the map? Are you putting it away? Are you using it? Do you think you need to use this map once a week? Mm -mm. You need to use this map every day. Because if you do not use this map every day... You know what's going to happen? You're going to hit that landmine. And you know who, who's in charge? Who, you know who's in charge of that landmine? Because you're on a journey. The devil is the one that's in charge of the landmines. He is the one that's in charge of the quicksand. He is the one that's putting all the... But God has given us the map. What are you going to do with your map? Amen. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I am giving you some good advice today. I am bringing this word to you in your life today. Amen. Don't put the map in your pocket. What are you doing with your map? That is my question. I bring a little bit of the map every week. Do you think that's enough? No. Because I don't bring the whole map. I, I think the map needs to be in you. I, I, we, I, don't, I don't preach that, oh, you only have to listen to me. On Sunday, no, no, you need to, even what I say, you probably need to go back and review what I'm saying. That's why some people take notes. You need to review what I'm saying. And I think you need more than just the map one day a week. You need the map more than one day a week. And I finish with that. And if, if you don't know Jesus Christ, today is the day that you, you might want to. And you've been running into a lot of bombs and a lot of quicksand in your life. And you need the map. Jesus is the map. Jesus is the word. Amen. In the book of John, it says, and he is the word. Amen. And he is the map. And Jesus will guide you. And today, if I'm talking to you, you say, Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. I repent of my sin. Just repeat it. Just repeat it. In your own words, I repent of my sins. Forgive me for everything that I've done. I want your map. I've never done it like that, but I want your map. Get, get in his word, because his word is going to guide you. Amen? With that said, I've finished my message. We're going to do communion, but first, I want my wife to come and pray for the sick. Real quick, this is going to be, you know, communion is part of the blood, so... Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. I hope that you are having a blessed Sunday because it is. And I am so thrilled that I thought Pastor was going to, you know, I was going to go after the, um, after communion. And I was like, Lord, you know, you gave me a dream last night. And I've been, I've been just like, not, like, I don't know. I was like, what is this dream for? And so I just know that the dream is for, for me to share with you you know 
And so I'm not going to tell you what the dream, you know, the, the dream, I'm going to tell you what the dream means, you know, what I, the dream that I had last night. So the dream that, that what God was trying to convey to me is that there are people in the church that are hurting, you know, there are people that are walking with that, you know, there's a, a, a term in medicine that is called a leaky gut. And, we, you know, if you have a leaky gut right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare healing since we're speaking about healing. So leaky guts heal right now in Jesus' name. But, you know, the, the dream was talking about people that have a leaky, you know, you know, imagination, a leaky mind, a leaky soul. And I'm so, you know, like when Pastor was talking about the device, I was just like floored. Yeah, right. Because what the enemy wants us is to have a leaky mind because the warfare is in the mind he's going to come with everything to distract us from the way you know jesus is the way the truth and the life and that's the only way to get to the father so his assignment is to get us uh hurt you know unfocused he wants to get us sick in the mind he wants to get us crazy but you know what god wants to heal the mind always a healer of the mind because if your mind is healed your listen to what james says if you know that your tongue if you have your tongue you know you know like speaking what it's supposed to your whole body will be aligned but you see your tongue only speaks what your thoughts are saying crazy right so that means that the enemy is going to distract you kill destroy and put to bed dead those you know, heavenly thoughts that you're supposed to have to corrupt them and end up in a place of, you know, death. And so that's the, the, that's the, the goal of the enemy. So I want, you know, the dream was about that, that God wanted to heal our minds. And I always pray about spirit, soul, and body. And I will not stop because this is my assignment to get you. I'm a soul winner. We all are soul winner, soul winner, but the soul, you know, is not, for say this thing that goes back to the to the to the to the grave. We are dust. We are bag of dust. Bag of dust. Tell you like remember we learned with Tony Evans. Mm -hmm. Tell each other that you're a dust, right? Because we are dust. However, what we are is soul. That's why we're soul winners, not body winners. Okay? Soul winners. So as being a soul winner, the thing is that we are helping each other to renew the mind. Because close your eyes, if you could close your eyes. You know, that's the real you, you know, that's the real you. You're going to leave this body behind and eventually you will meet it again in the future. But what the enemy is after, you know, is your soul. And yet he wants to invade this body because if he could invade your body being possessed, he can then destroy you and destroy everybody around you because you have allowed him in. So that's the importance that we put our mind in Christ and we tear down those evil thoughts and put those thoughts in the, in the, in, in the way that God says, you know, you know, casting down every imagination and, you know, and submitting it to Christ. And so this is what the enemy hates. And he hates that we're saying this because the reality that you and I are defeated when our mind is sick. Okay. And so that, that's why I pray first for your soul, because if your soul is, is healed, then your body will follow. If your spirit is healed, then your body will follow. You understand what I'm saying? Because you see, I could pray for healing right now, and your money will say, you, 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 why are you going to receive that? That is fake. Your soul will just throw it off, the power of God, in your and what he's delivering about being healed. Do you get what I'm saying? Your mind is everything. In the past, People, you, you saw a lot of warfare outside. Yes, it had to do with the mind and people's decision. But right now, Pharaoh is not after you per se here, you know, tangibly. Maybe you feel like your bills are, t your Pharaoh, your, your relationships are, you know what I'm saying? But the reality that your thoughts are your Pharaoh, your thoughts are your Red Sea, your thoughts are the calamity, your thoughts are your plague. Come on, we need healing. And that's what was God telling me. And so when God, when the, when people are trying to, you know, put those masks and stuff like that is to Im invade even worse, your imagination, get your imagination to, to where you could forget about God, where you could forget about what you're really, you know, who are you really? Come on. They want to program you. The, 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 the system wants to program you to forget about who you are, whose you are and where you headed. 
And so today, God wants to say, I want you to fall in love with me. This is this, this was the end of my dream where I was like really, you know, giving my mind to Christ and really just like, you know, the first thing is to forgive. And God was showing me that in the dream, I needed to forgive. I needed to forgive. Like the church needs to forgive. Forgive those that hurt you. Forgive those that, you know, you know, you know, that, that, that have persecuted you, that have wronged you, that have to, you know, talk about you. Forget your haters. Your haters do more for you than the, the, the than Peter, remember? Judas, Judas did more for, for Jesus because if it wasn't for Judah, we wouldn't be here. Then Peter, you understand what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, just, just forgive. And then, you know what I'm saying? The second thing that in my dream, it was that love covers multitude of sin. You need to embrace the love of God. I'm not telling you to embrace your love because we don't know love. We know lust, but we don't know love. The love comes is from the Father. And he says to just receive his love so that you can really give love. So that's what I want to pray for you because we are about to take communion. And the reality is that if we take the cup in a worthy matter, manner, if we take the body on a worthy ma a matter, matter, <laughs> you know, we will be condemned. We will be destroyed, the Bible says. But the Bible is telling us clearly that we need to have the mind of Christ, his love that produces life. Really, it produces, you know, it, it covers multitude of sin. So right now, close your eyes as, as the Lord is preparing to heal you. I'm not praying for you to be healed. I believe that when you take the cup, that when you take the communion, that heals you because it's a promise of God. It's the covenant that we have with God. We have salvation and we have communion. You know, we have if through the communion, we have salvation and we have healing. So those things are already going through your body, even though... If you don't have, you know, grape juice and you put that water, that water becomes literally that symbol of God's blood. And if you have not a bread and you have, like we had the other day, we didn't have, <laughs> we didn't have bread, but we had um, uh, platanitos chips, plantain chips, right? That became holy for us because literally, like the Catholic people, when they take the elements, they're not taking a bread and a wine. They are really taking the blood of Jesus and they're taking the bread, which is his body. So these things, the elements that you're about to take is really his body. This is a tough message to take, the Bible says. Says. A lot of people left the Lord because they couldn't understand this. So if you believe right now with me that this is really what it is, you're about to do more than I could pray for you. You're about to just hit healing in a second, spirit, soul, and body, because that's what he did at Calvary. Love. But right now, close your eyes because this is you cannot you can't do this. You cannot do this if you have hatred, if you have unforgiveness, if you have a leaky mind. Okay, if you have a leaky mind today that things are going everywhere, this is where you say, Lord, forgive me. This is because I'm thinking like this. Forgive me because I can stand the church. Forgive me because I can stand the world. You know, God loves so loved the world. He didn't hate the world. He loved the world. He was not part of the world, but he loved it too, enough to invite them to come in. You understand know what I'm saying? So we cannot just hate the people out there. They need us. So we need to change our minds. So close your eyes and let's pray for love to really invade us. Because this is what this world needs. It needs us to love for real, not have a leaky mind, but to have the mind of Christ and to really learn how to forgive. Even because you know what? Offenses will continue to come. You need just to have a steady armor. You understand what I'm saying? Because the darts will come. You just need to have the righteousness of God to say, you know what? Doesn't matter what the heck you do to me, I still love you anyways. In Jesus' name. Here we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive us for our sin. Forgive us for our leaky minds. Forgive us for our leaky spirit because we become sick in spirit because of our thoughts. Father, right now, I, I ask you to forgive me and I forgive myself for just not listening to the word and not being in the word as I should and just putting it down when people hurt me. I receive your forgiveness. I forgive myself and I release forgiveness to my brother and sister because that's the power of the cross. And now, Father, we release the elements so that we, Father, can really now receive the true healing that happened at the cross. And that goes for Pastor now. Up now. God bless you guys. I love you. I'm about to take communion with you guys. Hallelujah.
and get Jesus. Let me see. Let me look in the word. I read from 1 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 6. My map is falling apart. <laughs> Chapter 11. Verse 23. And like Rachel was saying, you know, the Bible says, you know, that that if we receive this these elements in an unworthy manner, you're guilty of the body and the blood. So I'm going to give a second for everyone to say, look, Forgive me for what I did this week. Close your eyes again. Forgive me for what I did this week. And that's all you need to do. You don't need to go into a little capilla with a, with a priest or anything like that. You need to do it. Jesus is the priest. Okay? So right now, just say, Lord, forgive me. And then we'll be ready to take the elements. Amen? <laughs> so it says, For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke the bread and said, This is my body, is for you. this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat of the bread. Hallelujah. In the same way, after supper. He took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you can eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us drink of the cup. Father, I thank you for... For your body, Lord, for your sacrifice, for what you did on the cross, Lord God, for your blood and your body, Father God. Thank you for allowing us to do this today, Father God, and in remembrance of you, because we do this to remember what you did for us, Lord God. And thank you for the sacrifice, Lord. Thank you that I am saved today because of the body and because of the blood, Lord God. And I thank you for everything, Lord. I thank you for all those that are watching all those that have participated in today's message, Lord God, I bless them today, Father God, as a priest of this house, Father God, of this ministry, Lord God. I bless you, Father. I bless you, people, <laughs> congregation, or whatever, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Until next week, thank you for watching. Let the Lord's countenance be upon you today. Have a great week and have a great Sunday in Jesus' name. Amen. Read your